this session we will cover the payment function and the what-if analysis features Excel provides for decision maker. In the example we have here, we are taking a loan or a mortgage of $400,000. The annual interest rate we are using is 3.75%, and we will pay it back on a monthly basis for the next 25 years. First, I'm going to calculate the payment function. I'm going to go to function, choose for the category financial, and under the letter P, I'm going to find payment. So the payment function is going to ask me for the rate. I'm going to click on the rate and divide by 12 because it's a monthly payment. The number of periods, instead of typing 300, I'm going to click on 25 times 12. The reason I want to use the actual input is the, to use the what-if analysis later. And the present value of the loan, I'm going to say minus and click on the loan. So for the next three years, I'm going to be paying $2,056.52 every month. To calculate the total payments, that's going to be equal to the payment times the number of years times 12. And I'm going to say equal the total payments minus the loan to calculate the total interest. One of the things you may encounter is uh, you really want to get a loan, but you don't have the $2,056 available. So you can use the what-if analysis. For example, if you can afford only $1,800 a month, what kind of a loan can you take? So you can go to data, what-if analysis. On the Mac, you will find the question mark with the what-if analysis on the left around here. What-if analysis. And use the goal seek. So we say that we cannot afford the $2,056. We can just afford, for example, $1,800. That's the value. So what, can a loan, what kind of a loan can I take if I want to pay only $1,800 a month? If you click on the loan and say, OK, Excel is going to tell you that with $1,800 a month, you can uh, take a loan of $350,000 and $105. Uh, maybe you can try something else. Maybe you can negotiate a better interest rate. So I'm going to cancel that and go again to the what if analysis goal seek and say, OK, $1,800. If I had a chance to negotiate a better interest rate, what kind of an interest rate can I ask the banker to give us if we wanted to pay only $1,800 and get the same 400000 loan for the same number of years when you say, OK, if you can negotiate a 2.53% interest rate, you can take the same loan. So the goal seek, I'm going to cancel it as one part of the what-if analysis. I'm going to go to the sheet called payment and what-if analysis. I calculated already these three values, as you saw on the previous sheet. And now what I want to know is how or what would be the values if instead of 3.75%, uh, it was 2% or 2.2%, 2.25% or 2.5% and so on and so forth. How do I connect my what if analysis or as I call it sensitivity table to the original model? I did it and I'm going to do it here again. I'm going to say equal and click on the payment. And here, what I did is equal and click on the total payments. And here, I'm going to say equal and click on the total interests. So what would happen to these three values, which are the output of my model, if the interest rate is any one of these values that you see here on the left? The way to do it is you select the table, excluding the text headers. Don't select the text headers, because then you're not going to get the answers. And what you want to ask yourself is what would happen to these three values if instead of 3.75%, it would be 2% or 2.25% and so on and so forth. 
the way you're going to do it is you're going to get again, go again to data. What if analysis? This time you're going to choose data table. What is changing along the row? Nothing is changing along the row. You ignore the first cell here. You go to the second cell here and say column input cell. What is changing down the table here? The interest rate. You click on the original interest rate and say OK. And these are all the values associated with the different interest rates. So if you have to make a decision or negotiate with anybody, this is the sensitivity analysis table. Let's try and do it one, one more time. This time we want to know what would happen to our output if instead of uh, 25 years, it would be 10 years, 15 years, and so on and so forth. Actually, I should insert an extra row here. I'm going to right click here and insert a row so I can now go and connect this table to the original model. The way I'm going to do it, it's the same thing or the same way I did it before. I'm going to say equal, click on the payment. Equal, click on the total payment. And say here equal, and cl click on the total interest. I am going to try and format it so it looks the same way as the table above. I'm going to click here and under the home, I'm going to find the format painter and paint the inside of my table so it looks the same. And now I'm going to select the table and ask myself, what is going to happen to this output if instead of 25 years, the original model has, it's going to be 10 years or 15 years, or 20 years, 25, 30, and so on and so forth. Of course, you'll find out that with 25 years, it's going to be, or we're going to have the same values. I'm going to select the table, as you see here, and go to data, what if analysis, data table. Well, what is changing down the column now at this time? it's the number of years. So I'm going to click on the number of years and say OK. And I'm going to get all these values. Actually, my benchmark are these three values. This is my original model. And this is also my benchmark to show or to prove to myself that I'm not making a mistake. So you saw how I had a one-way table where on the left I had the interest rate or on the left I had my number of years. Now what I wanted to do is create a two-way table. So now I want to know what would happen to my output if instead of 3.75%, I have 2%, 2.25%, and so on and so forth. And instead of the 25 years, I have 10 years, 15 years. So now I have a two-way table. Two things are changing. The number of years are changing along the row, and the interest rate is changing down the column. Because I have a two-way table, I can analyze only one value, not all three of them. So I'll try the payment. I'm going to click here and say equal and click on the payment. Basically, what I want to know is what would happen to this payment if instead of 25 years and 3.75% interest rate, I'll have any of these values. And I linked it in the intersection when I said equal payment. So I'm going to select the table again, and I'm also going to ask myself, what is changing along the row? The number of years. What is changing on the column is the interest rate. So I'm going to go to the same place, data, what if analysis, data table. What is changing along the row is the number of years. I'm going to click on the years. What was changing down the column on this table is the interest rate. And when you're going to say OK, you're going to get all these values. Let me format it again. Click here on the home and format all these values. And I will check. I'm going to select all of these and double click for the auto fit. And I will check whether my original model here 
for 25 years and 3.75% is indeed $2,056.52. That's my benchmark to see that I didn't make a mistake. So what you saw here is a way to analyze the payment function using the Excel. This is the solution to the exercises of part three, the payment and what if analysis. The first thing we were asked to do is to name the cells in column B, just select the two columns and go to the formulas create from selection. And it chooses the left column and we change the names. So we are going to calculate the payment here. We are going to go to function, financial, and under the letter P, we're going to find the PMP, the payment function. It's going to ask us for the rate. We're going to click on the rate and divide it by 12 for the monthly payment. Number of periods is going to be the number of years times 12. And for the present value, we're going to say minus the loan. So for the next three years, we'll be paying $899.13 a month. The total payments for the three years is going to be equal to the payment times the number of years times 12. And the total interest is going to be equal to the total payments minus the loan. I'll just pick up this format, go home and use the format painter and select these two values to get the same format. So the second question was, what if we can pay only $750 a month? What kind of a loan can we afford? We are going to go to data. What if analysis goal seek? We say it's $750. And the loan that we can afford paying $750 is going to be $25,024. In other words, if we wanted to pay only $750 a month, we can get a loan of $25,024. The second part of this what if analysis set of exercises was to create the sensitivity analysis table. For example, if instead of 5%, we had 2%, 3%, 4%, or 8%, as you see here in the table, we are going to say equal select the table, the payment, equal, select the total payments, equal, select the total interest. I will try and pick up this format and just format the entire table to look as there. Maybe add a couple of decimal points. Select the table excluding the text headers and ask myself, what is changing on the left? What is changing on the left is the interest rate. So we're going to go to data, what if analysis, data table. Nothing is changing along the row. We'll ignore the first cell. What is changing down the column is the rate. Click on the original rate and say, OK. And you will discover the sensitivity analysis that uh, table that we discussed. I can always mark my 5%. This is my benchmark to show that the model works for the 5% we had originally in the original model. Now we can do the same thing for the number of years. Instead of uh, three years, we'll have one year, two years, three years, four years, and so on and so forth. We're going to say equal, click on the payment, equal, click on total payments, equal, total interest. Let me just format it again the same way as we have it up here. Select the table. Now we are going to select the table excluding the text headers again and ask ourselves what is changing down the column. What is changing down the column here is the number of years. We'll go to data. What if analysis, data table, 
and go to the column input cell and select the years. And again, you can always go back to see whether your model really worked with the benchmark and see that for three years you have the same values as the original model. And now we are going to have a two-way table where the number of years is changing along the row and the interest rate is changing down the column. I can choose any one of our outputs, but I always prefer to use the one that we look at most, which is the payment. And I am going to, which is here in the intersection, I said equal payment, select the table. I can use Control A or Command A and uh, see what would happen to all these values. I'm going to go again to data. What if analysis, data table. What is changing along the row is the number of years. And what is changing down the column is the interest rate. When you say OK, you can see the table. And if you format it, you will discover that it looks the same for the three years and 5%. So this is the solution.